Hello everyone, Tony Costa here from Toronto Apologetics. Glad to have you along. In this brief video, I want to discuss a, a subject related to Islam. And I want to talk about in particular about the figure of Waraka ibn Nafal. I want to talk about what he had to say about Gabriel, Moses, and Muhammad. Uh, Waraka ibn Nafal was the cousin of Muhammad's first wife, Khadija. And according to Islamic tradition, in 610 AD, uh, Muhammad received his first call in the cave Hira, uh, and uh, the mountain Hira, rather. And while he was there, he tells us that a spirit entity appeared to him, clasped him by the throat, and told him, Ekara, recite in the name of your Lord. And Muhammad says, what am I supposed to recite? And then uh, this entity squeezed his throat even further. And then a third time, uh, Muhammad said that he almost passed out. This experience really shaked Muhammad. It really shaked him up into a panic. He actually thought he was possessed by a demon, and then he left the cave, and we're told that he even became suicidal, um, and which is very strange, because if this was the calling of Muhammad, this is very different from the calling of the prophets in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, no one that was called by God in the Bible ever walked away thinking that they were possessed by demons, or they were the suicidal, or they didn't walk away wondering whether or not that was uh, a satanic entity that had appeared to them. But yet, in, in, in the calling of what Islam says is the last prophet to the world, the final messenger, his calling is, is, is a, a, a very terrifying experience for him, as he, as he recounts. And so what Khadija does is she takes Muhammad to her cousin, Waraka ibn Nafal, who is said to have been a convert to Christianity. Uh, we're not told exactly what type of a Christian he was. Was it Orthodox? Was he an Nestorian? Uh, was he an Ebionite? We're not sure. But it was Waraka ibn Nafal who um, calmed him down, who basically assured Muhammad that, that this revelation was from Allah. And so really, when you really think about it, it were, there were two people who were basically responsible for getting, uh, getting um, Islam off the ground, and that would be Muhammad's first wife, Khadija, and her cousin, a Christian convert, uh, a convert to Christianity, Waraka ibn Nafal, it were these two who really got Muhammad to accept his calling. So it's quite interesting that it was a woman, Khadija, and a Christian uh, uh, monk who assured Muhammad of his calling. Now, there are two accounts given to us by Muhammad's youngest wife, Aisha, whom he married when she was six years old uh, and uh, consummated the marriage when she was nine and he was 54. Aisha tells us this, the prophet returned to Khadija while his heart was beating rapidly. She took him to Waraka bin Nafal, who was a Christian convert, and used to read the gospel in Arabic. Waraka asked the prophet, what do you see? When he told him, Waraka said, this is the same angel whom Allah sent to the prophet Moses. So, uh, Muhammad returns to Khadija. His heart is beating rapidly, which uh, is um, uh, indicative of his panic, uh, his anxiety that he had experienced in the cave. And what does she do? She takes him to Waraka bin Nafal. Notice he was a Christian convert, and he used to read the gospel in Arabic. So, so he's said to be a Christian. He 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 would read the gospel in Arabic. We're not told exactly what gospel that was. Was it Matthew? Was it Mark? Was it Luke? Was it John? We're not sure. And then Waraka asks Muhammad, "What do you see?" Or "What did you see?" And then when he told him what he saw, what he saw, Waraka said, "Oh, this is the the same angel whom Allah sent to the prophet Moses." Now, what is interesting here is that it is this Christian convert who seems to calm Muhammad's fears. And it's also the same Christian convert that tells him that this was actually an angel who appeared to you. In fact, it is the same angel whom Allah sent to the prophet Moses. So who is this angel that Allah sent to Moses? Because we do read about angels in the Old Testament, in the life of Moses, but who is this angel? We're not told exactly the name of this angel. In the second account by Aisha, it's a it's a longer version from Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari. Remember, Bukhari is one of Islam's most trusted sources in terms of the Hadith. It says, Khadija then accompanied him, Muhammad, to her cousin, Waraka bin Nafil bin Asad bin Abdul Uzza, who during the pre-Islamic period became a Christian and used to write the writing with Arabic letters. He would write from the gospel in Arabic as much as God wished him to write. He was an old man and had lost his eyesight. Khadija said to Waraka, listen to the story of your nephew, O my cousin. Waraka asked, O my nephew, what have you seen? God's apostle described whatever he had seen. Waraka said, this was the same one 
who keeps the secrets whom Allah had sent to Moses, angel Gabriel. But after a few days, Waraka died, and the divine inspiration was also paused for a while. So a couple of things we want to bear in, in mind here. So Khadija accompanies Muhammad to her cousin, and we're told that uh, Waraka bin Nafil became a Christian during the pre-Islamic period. This is a period that Muslims refer to as al-Jahliya, the time of ignorance or darkness. It's, we're told here that he became a Christian and he used to write the writing with Arabic letters. And then it says that he would write from the gospel in Arabic as much as God wished him to write. Again, we're not told exactly what this gospel is. We're not told exactly uh, which of the four gospels th that it's referring to. But notice that he would write as much as God wished him to write. So it almost sounds like uh, that Waraka is, is somewhat of a prophet here, something of, of an inspired writer, because it's it's he would write as much as God wished him to write. And then we're told that he was an old man and he lost his eyesight. And then Khadija tells him, listen to the story of your nephew, oh my cousin. And so Waraka approaches Muhammad and tells him, oh my nephew, what have you seen? And then God's apostle described what he had seen. And then he said, this entity that appeared to you, which later Islamic tradition identifies as Jibadil, that's Arabic for Gabriel. He says, this was the same one who keeps the secrets whom Allah had sent to Moses, and then in parenthesis, Angel Gabriel. But after a few days, Wadaka died, and the divine inspiration was also paused for a while. So notice here that in this citation, this account in Bukhari, notice that the one that Wadaka identifies as the one who appeared to Muhammad in the cave he says that this is the angel Gabriel. And then he says that this was the same one who keeps the secrets whom Allah had sent to Moses. Now, here we have a problem. According to the Bible, if you look at the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, where we have the life of Moses and the law that God had given to Moses, the name Gabriel nowhere appears. There's no reference whatsoever to Gabriel. In fact, um, Gabriel only appears in the Old Testament in the book of Daniel. He, he appears in uh, Daniel chapter 8, and if you read through chapters 9 and 10, you'll notice references to Gabriel and another uh, angel, a chief angel, one of the chief angels, Michael, one of the chief princes. And so the only book of the Bible that actually gives us the name of these angels is the book of Daniel. And Daniel was written, and Daniel lived at least 900 years after Moses, after Moses. So if you do a search through Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the name Gabriel never appears. There's nothing said at all in the Bible about Gabriel coming to Moses or giving him revelation or speaking to him. However, in the rabbinic literature, like the Mishnah, the Midrash, and books like uh, Rabbah Exodus. These are rabbinic writings that were written 200 years plus after Jesus, long, long, long after Moses. In the rabbinic writings, you do have stories where Gabriel does come to Moses. You do have stories where Gabriel does protect Moses. And you do have references to Gabriel being with Moses and even burying Moses at the end of his life alongside of Michael. But these come from rabbinic sources, not from the Bible. And these rabbinic sources are very late. Many of them are legends. They're not really based on history or fact. And so what we find here is that if Wadaka had any reference or had any basis for saying that Gabriel, the same one who appeared to you, Muhammad, is the same one who spoke to Moses— the only source that he would have gotten that from would have been from the Jewish community in Arabia, most likely from Medina. And as we have already seen, the Quran also copies or refers to stories found in the Mishnah, in the Talmud, in the Midrash, in the Apocryphal Gospels. The Quran quotes sources that are spurious, that is, they're not reliable. And so just like the Quran quotes from these other sources, and if you look at uh, Surah uh, 25 or chapter 25 of the Quran, verses 4 to 6, there's a charge there that the unbelievers say to Muhammad that all, all these stories you're telling us is nothing new. We've heard them all before. These are just tales of the ancients. Well, it's not just the Quran that seems to do this, but it seems that even Wanaka is, is probably familiar with these rabbinic stories about Gabriel and Moses, and he simply assumes that these stories are true. 
But if you look to the Bible, nothing ever is said about Gabriel speaking to Moses or Gabriel coming to assist Moses. And so here we have another historical problem. Even if Bukhari is reliable here, now remember the, the hadiths like Bukhari and Muslim were written over 200 years after Muhammad. And Bukhari, from all the collections that he took, uh, he took less than he took less than two percent as authentic and sahih as sound. And so the question is whether or not this story here is reliable. Is it reliable or is it not? Even if it is reliable, we still have a major problem. Because if Waraka truly lived and Waraka was the co cousin of, of Khadija, it's very clear here that he also makes a huge historical blunder in assuming that Gabriel spoke to Moses and therefore Gabriel is the same one who spoke to Muhammad. Notice the last sentence in this uh, hadith. It says, after a few days, Waraka died and the divine inspiration was also paused for a while. So something's very very interesting is going on here. The divine inspiration also paused. Why would why would Allah's inspiration to Muhammad pause or stop for a while when Wadaka died? And so notice he is said to be able to write the Arabic. He could write with Arabic letters, and he would write from the gospel in Arabic. And so this has led some to speculate that is it possible that Wadaka also helped Muhammad to write or to 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 transcribe parts of the Quran? Because we're told he was able to write in the Arabic letters, and if Muhammad was illiterate, according to Islamic tradition, which I don't believe he was, but if we take the standard Islamic traditional view that Muhammad was illiterate, then it would not be a, a big leap to conclude that in this story, Waraka probably helped him. And he even says that uh, in this account, he says that he would love to live to see the day when Muhammad uh, would indeed achieve his full prophetic status and be successful. And so Waraka dies, and then the inspiration, the divine inspiration, uh, also stopped for a while. And, and we're told that Gabriel stopped appearing to Muhammad, and then Muhammad became suicidal again. So all of this to say, folks, that um, when we consider all of these things, um, we notice here that in this account here, in the Hadith, uh, we, we have this person, uh, uh, Waraka, uh, and and he is uh, a relative, obviously, of, of Khadija. He's responsible for um, uh, encouraging Muhammad and, and basically pushing him along and encouraging him along uh, in his mission. But what is also interesting is that he claims that that entity that Muhammad first believed was demonic, that that entity was Gabriel, and that that same entity, Gabriel, was the same one who spoke to Moses. And as we have seen already, the stories of Gabriel being related to Moses in any way come from much later rabbinic sources, like the mission of the Midrash, uh, Genesis Rabbah. Uh, and so we know that these stories are not historical. They're not inspired um, in the sense that Holy Scripture is inspired. And so I thought that I would just put this together and um, give you some food for thought and uh, appreciate you joining us. And so uh, we look forward again to uh, seeing you uh, in another episode. And again, uh, remember to uh, subscribe and uh, share the video with others. Subscribe to Toronto Apologetics, and you'll be advised of other videos that are coming down the road. Thank you so much again. God bless. Bye for now.